Good morning and welcome to our SPE, uh, DEETS Digital Energy Technical Section and Data Sciences Engineering Analytics Combined Session. We are very delighted and privileged to have with us today Industries Johan Krebers, and we are going to have a conversation about OSDU, Open Subsurface Data Universe. And before I formally introduce Johan Krebers, let me uh, pull in Patrick Vinpetti, who is my colleague from SP. And Patrick, if you want to say a few words about yourself. Hi, thank you, Sujma, for having me. My name is Patrick Patai. Um, I'm the chairman of the, the committee Digital Transformation for Digital Energy Technology section of the SPE. And I'm very happy to be here today. And <laughs> I'm even more happy to have you, John, on that team. It's going to be fantastic, I'm sure. Thank you. And for myself, quickly, I'm also part of the same team on the digital transformation. I'm the co-chair. I'm also part of the data science analytics uh, board with Sylvie uh, Livescu, who's not able to join us today. And uh, formerly the CDO of um, subsurface and data wells from Shell and recently joined um, in a non-executive director role in Icon Sciences. So it's my pleasure and uh, really an honor to welcome Johan Krebers. Uh, uh, just a little bit about his background. He is vice president of IT innovation and general manager of emerging digital technologies for Shell. And in this role, he has been accountable for defining the future elements of IT strategy as well as spotting new digital technologies. And um, also he maintains very active link with external parties, you know, particularly startups. Um, in his role, he has been also the initiator of the open group called Open Footprint Forum, which we're not going to talk about today, but it is very much focused on the zero carbon footprint. And he's part of the, the managing committee of OSDU which now has over 190 members. So he has really been a, a great starter and a pioneer in this role. Johan is based in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Um, before his this role, he was the vice president of architecture for Shell, where he created um, several uh, global architectural practices across Shell. And, and prior to that, um, Johan has had multiple roles and in, um, in years of his experience. So, Johan, uh, welcome for and thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. So, we are really going to start with uh, your, you know, thoughts and insights, uh, giving us an overview of OSDU. You know, what is the big vision? Where it is headed? Um, any key takeaways for those who are not aware of it? I know there's a lot being uh, talked and we have shared about it. But again, we want you to give a little bit of an overarching uh, perspective of OSDU. Okay, let's start a little bit with the history then of OSDU, that people know a little bit where we're coming from. Uh, so we started OSDU about uh, two, two and a half years ago. And the whole thinking behind OSDU was and still is today, is really bringing all the data, starting subservice and wells data, into a single data platform. And really bring it into a single data platform and then separate the data clearly from the applications use a clear API layer. So what it means, you now have all the data in single data platform, separate from the application fine API layer, and that the, the data platform and the loading of the services and all the related services are part of the OSDU data platform. Um, and, um, and, and that really is the scope of the, o, of, o, of the OSDU data platform. And what's important in case of OSDU, we really focus on these things where we do not compete. We do not compete when how we store the data. We do compete what data we have, how, how we make use of the data, but how we store the data, how we load the data, how we protect the data, we do not compete. So if it, when you talk about OSDU data platform, then you talk about the storing of the data, the loading of the data, the protecting of the data, the support of the data, uh, the underpinning arch, the underpinning infrastructure of the data. That's and that's really where we work together. But if you say, okay, how do you want to exploit that data uh, with applications? Of course, there we do compete because everybody wants to have the best applications. Of course, they want to have their own choice of applications. That's where we started. So first we do two things. First, it brings the data into single data platform. Two, creating a platform for software companies to develop applications 
against because there's a you create a market out there. Those are two underpinnings for more or less of, of OSDU. So we started about, we had, we had our first kickoff meeting September 2018 with about 10 members. You, you highlight a moment ago, we have about, I think, 193, 194, something like that at the moment, well, over 190 today. Um, so what we said, okay, so if you go back then over it, if, if, to one of the first people contributed software to OSDU was Shell. But Shell already had started something called SDU, the Subsurface Data Universe, early 2018, uh, early 20. 18 yes um, and then afterwards in about uh, around 2019 mid 2019 Schlumberg decided to uh, to stop their desk their own desk platform but to make it also an open source data platform because they realized that really as one company you cannot really maintain or win by with your data service you have to focus on the applications so at that time mid 2019 decided that we would create an OSDU version based on a code from Shell, based on the code from Stumbize, but also make it a fully open source piece of code. So be, there will be no linkage to Shell anymore. There will be no linkage to Stumbize anymore. Fully open source, owned and managed by the forum. So that started in September 20, 2019. And that, that was the basis for what we call R3 or the Mercury release, which we launched last week into the market. So March 24th, we launched into the market the, the first production release of, of, of OSDU, ready to go into operational environments of the operators out there, covering exploration, development, and that's available on four cloud platforms. So there's Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and IBM. It's also available in if people need in an on-premise environment. We, do, we have countries out where we do not have cloud or public cloud, but we do have, of course, on-premise. So also there, it will be supported. So that has been launched. In the meantime, we also launched a strategy in the middle of last year where we said, okay, how can we create out of the OSDU an open energy data platform? So how do we grow that OSDU, not just in the oil and gas market, but also in the alternative, in the other energy market, like wind, solar, etc. So we create a strategy which was underpinned called the Open Energy Data Platform, where we say we're going to bring the data of exploration, development, and wells. So we're going to add to that production, upstream production, into a single data platform. And we're going to add to that wind farm, solar farms, CCUS, hydrogen, geothermal, all into that single same data platform. So we have did the first step, the, Earth, the Mercury, which was launched last week. The production we want to add in the second half this year, and we also want to add in the second half this year, uh, the wind farms into the same environment and the after solar, etc. All to that single data platform with one set of APIs. And on top of that, of course, you can have many different applications out there because that's outside the scope of the OSU data platform. In parallel, also remember when we launched R3 last week, it formally became a fully open source based environment because the last year and a half we spent to pick up the, the Subizé code. It was Google based code and, and shell code to make it all open source. So it, it runs in the same way and same fashion on all the cloud platforms. No difference. So we said, OK, uh, we, we, we have now this single environment. We also added to that uh, a real time capability because increasingly our data will become real time, so not just file based, but streaming data. If you think about, um, if, think, if, you think, if you think about production, if you think in, in future also about your wind farms, your drilling environments. So we're also developing in parallel what we call a Kafka engine, which gives OSDU a full real time environment under the cover as well, from a streaming point of view, from a data ingestion point of view, from a data storage point of view. Mm -hmm. And then also we added to that ads facilities. So we want to launch latest here OSU ads because we also need increasingly ads facilities for same, some of the same service like drilling, etc. Uh, again, open source based uh, for the various scenarios we need ads. And the last thing we kicked off together with IOGP, we kicked it off about two months ago, is the integration of the engineering data into the OSU data platform. Engineering data being your um, being your 3D, 3D models, being, being your uh, pipelining, being your electrical data, etc., also made that part of the OG data platform. So that means 
in the OSU data web, you then have your operational data, so your exploration data, your development data, your production data, but also your engineering data. So in principle, you can create now a single uh, a digital twin more or less out there based on the, those two overall data families. That together comes into a single environment. That's what we bring to the market. And we, when we talk bring to the market, we talk about operational services. It's not just the code we bring to the market, but also your backup restore procedures, your monitoring, your logging, all the things you need to run as an operational capability. So it's code in the middle, but around it, you find training facilities, of course, documentation facilities, external data services, dashboard, you name it, to make this a fully end-to-end -end service. Anyway, that's really where we're coming from and where we're heading for uh, now and in the and in the future. So let me stop me over here uh, for a moment now. Wow. So this, this, yeah, I've, I've, I've been so impressed that I totally forgot to unmute myself <laughs> when asking my question. Yeah. Um, whew, that, that is really a lot. And I mean, I think everybody who deals with digital understands that data is the key and, and is a lot and is a lot of work. And, and that OSDU is most probably the, the first initiative in this direction that has a true chance to succeed. If I put myself now in the shoes of, of, a, of a young resume engineer, wh what is it actually what I can expect in the next few months to come and to be there as a tool, as, as, a, as a direct benefit to me in, in daily life, as a very tangible and simple and short example? Yeah. Uh, first, of course, we need to remember that OSU is a data platform. We do not include the applications. So they place it on top of the platform. Um, I, I, I maybe also, I'm going to answer your question in a moment, um, but also I go back to the launch last week. We did the, so we did the launch on March 24th, and we also asked several companies out there to demonstrate their applications. So when we had the launch last week, we had about seven, uh, sorry, six companies in the morning seven in the afternoon, they all had five minutes to launch, to demonstrate their applications. 80% of these companies were small startup type companies. Of course, you had their Slumberzee, you had their Halliburton, the rest was all startup companies, small companies. And they all showed their quite nice applications actually out there in, in the various areas. But it showed well, our objective of OSU always was, and I will come back to your question, but our objective of OSU always was, because what we saw in the subsurface space, because of large companies owning both the data and applications, that there was no real innovation happening. It was really stifled by the big companies. A small company had no chance because they could not access the data, because they didn't own the APIs, they didn't own the data. And of course, what, what, what was the whole idea with OSU to break that link between data and applications with the API layers? It was, it was very nice last week. That if you if you go back, you, the, the record will be available later this week. Just have a look at that, and then you find you find 80% uh, of companies are small companies, and it really proves the point. The moment you make data available, you make sure that the data, the formats is managed not by a company, but by in this case, but OT forum, so independent. You make sure data definitions are not managed by one company, but by a forum. That you open up the world to an innovation space. Now go back to your question. So what we offer is the possibility for that person to have his critical data into a single data platform, bring it all together into a single environment. That person most likely, or maybe, wants to develop an AI application. Don't say, I, I want to do certain things using AI technology. So he can pick up his Python environment or, or, or take, in the case of Amazon, a special um, uh, environment to help him with that. And then all of a sudden the data is not sitting in silos anymore. Now the data is coming together and he can develop an AI application if that is needed or other applications into the single environment. But it's also nice to do, of course. So it, what enables that, but it's also important, what he also can do differently, make sure he has an orchestration engine. Uh, and what's an orchestration engine is really because those applications no longer will be thick applications, will be very tiny applications called microservices. And with an orchestration engine, you start linking these microservices into business workflows. So if he, he, he has the ability, if he works with a software engineer, to develop some of those microservices, but he can then decide what his business workflow is going to be. Because he say, in my case, the business workflow for this particular field needs to have these steps. 
So the data enables that, because the data make that all possible. Because the data come together, enables the stuff. But on top of that, you then have that that person you're talking about has to choose an article to, to, to these small startup companies say, hey, I saw you have this nice application of Stitcher and OSDU who can do this. He, can, he, he could go to the to the marketplace of Amazon or Microsoft to download that application in his own environment because the application will be the operational will be made available via the marketplace of the software of the hosting providers, bring it to his own environment and start using. So the different ways how you can start exploiting the data. But the main point is data one environment freed up via the API layer, and then it can do either its own applications, third-party applications, you name it. I think that's that that's excellent. Um, so let me just follow up, uh, Johan. You you named you know not only you know big players, but you said there were several small companies who demonstrated. So my question to you is, you know, since we are talking at the Society of Petroleum Engineers Forum, um, how do you want SPE and the industry to play a part? You know, how can other players join, and how do we contribute to accelerate this journey? What what would you know make this faster and a lot more um, you know robust and and getting the outcomes that we want is there is there anything you see that industry-wide uh, organizations can do yeah of course you can do multiple things eh? because you are a body are quite powerful you have members uh, working in various companies out there entities out there so a number of things you can do one you can really when you talk to your members who are maybe software suppliers say hey even when when is your application available on OSU? Start asking these type of questions. Yeah? Because mm -hmm. this question will think, if an operator do exactly the same, and also say as an operator, say, why are we not moving into the OSU space? But it's it's always, it's important you start that the operators and other people start asking software companies, say, hey, when when is your application available on OSU? Because that it's, it, you know, the, these are things about the chicken egg stories. Uh, you, everybody can wait for each other. Nothing's going to happen in today. You have to, you have to break it. That's why, I said to you about last week, we had those 13 applications available because we went out there. But what's important, you start asking the software providers, hey, what is when when is your date, when is your application ready to run on OSU space and can be made available? That was to me would be very important to you, you, you as a body start asking the software providers out there because uh, that will start people ask will ask them, ask themselves, hey yes, why not? And we need to create that demand out there. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, I, I love the picture and the idea of OSDU functioning like my mobile phone and then having all kinds of applications and microservices um, that help me to make sense out of the data. That that sounds great. A question I would have, and I think it's, it's, it's a question that we always ask at the end of every interview, is a bit like, what would you suggest to any young engineer out there um, to prepare herself or himself for the digital future and for using a service like always to use to the maximum. And it's important that every SME really should be very digital aware. Every SME should, should know Python left, right and center, should be able to write, to be able to also work, exploit data, because this is all about data, data, you know, it's all about data, data. Also will bring data together, but it doesn't that does that is not the expertise. Expertise come from people with applications on top. It's also these young engineers should not just be SMEs. The SME but the SME also should have a good understanding of data and also know how to exploit from a distant point of view that data. Yeah. Because he 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 or she can do lots of clever stuff. It's very simple tooling out there. If you go to this platform, they have lots of very simple tooling how to exploit the data out there. So make sure you you you're digital aware. Make sure you understand uh, what uh, AI, machine learning, machine vision, but especially here machine learning can do for you. How it can help you do a much better job. How it can help you that you read all the data, not 10% of the data. I think it's important that it, when it comes to that, it's not just I'm an SME in my f function, but also I am. I know what it's all about from a data point of view. That also helps. It, it doesn't mean you need to become the super expert in the area of AI. But a good awareness to be able to work with it is important. And also when you want to work with a super expert, you also understand that language. If you say, I want to have a very complex AI application, you might work with a super AI specialist. Then it's also important that you can speak that language. Okay, I'm the SME, but also understand what, you, what your challenges will be. So 
that we will be important for that is really a must be digital aware for him or her to survive in the job. And it's true for any job, whether it's in subservice or else, digital aware, what the tooling is out there, what can be done digital is important. Just, just to clarify, Johan, on the skills, I think you, you, you said, you know, there has to be this readiness, but since you said discovers renewables and, you know, uh, we are going much broader than just yeah. oil and gas, is, is there a knowledge overlap about experiences of workflows, you know, when we are broadening our whole energy spectrum? Is There will be some, but of course, if you look at, I mean, there's, there's of course, there's a, there's a quite a close link is between, of course, CCUS and the subsurface space. There's clearly linkage because of uh, the, the reservoir usage. There's linkage between uh, offshore wind farming and subsurface. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are a number of the old new ones where they have linkages, where it's handy. If you, you know, if you if you work with CCS, of course, it's also good if you know about subsurface because it's a, it's a large subsurface angle over there. Uh, but of course, all, lots of other things are totally different because it is. If you look at the wind farm business or solar farm business. It's distinctly different, of course, from a subsurface well because it's more closely aligned to your to a production space out there. Because you 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 collect in all these environments really IoT type data of, of time CS data like you do with uh, with uh, in, in, your, in your oil and gas production environments more, more closely aligned with that environment. Not so much with the subsurface space, apart from what the example I gave, but more with uh, the production space. All right. Uh, well, let, let me quickly ask anything about your personal motivation. You know, Johan, you have. You have, you know, led so many things. What what drives you and excites you about the work you're doing and with OSTU? You know, you have extensive well, years of experience. What's what's yeah. exciting about you know the digital transformation now? Well, what the two separate separate things, of course. Let's first talk about what OSTU. I've been I've been working in subsurface space for the last maybe ten years, and we had that idea already for several years that we need to bring this data together, and what really what really was, what really became, uh, and, uh, and, and, and because I, we, that vision of what we talk about now, we already had a number of years already. It's not something which came uh, all of a sudden yesterday. But what really made the difference when we started in Shell early 2018, the first point in Shell we said, the people in Shell said, some senior VP said, hey, can we make this an industry solution? And then in March, I don't forget, in March 2018, we spoke to about six or seven oil and gas companies, say, hey, we're doing this work, do you want to join? And they all said yes. And it's purely a timing issue because if, if I would have asked that question four years ago, and it was in the US, I would have been shot because, it, because people said, go away, we're competing, we don't want to work together. But, but, but at the moment, all of us two years ago, and even still today or three years ago, had the pressure digital. And none of us had a digital solution ready. None of us had the data ready for this environment. And none of us were in a position to do this on our own because it's quite a massive exercise you're talking about. So that getting those, getting then those seven or eight members off the ground in September 2018 in the Galleria in, in, um, in Houston, have the kickoff meeting with 10 members and growing that over the last two and a half years to almost 200 members. Oh, that is very exciting and motivates left, right, and center. It means you have to work on a day and night because it's all about relationships. Because people, of course, don't see things, but we have to. We have to. We need to have Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and IBM all work together on the same thing. If you walk outside the door, they compete. Inside the door, they have to work together, and that's going on the same with Schumacher, Halliburton. They all. So you have to bring the community together. So that excites you. And overall, in digital, what excites you is because the data. And all the new things happening in the in the sensor space, in the drone space, in the virtual reality space. There's so much happening now at a very low cost base, which are which things which were never ever possible. Which are all we always say, everything is possible today. The limitations to human being, not the technology. You can you we can't dream enough things up. What is possible? Because you, you, anything you can think about is possible nowadays. That's why the time is so exciting now. Because when you talk about robotics, when you talk about Blockchain, we talk about new energy, uh, existing energies, predictive maintenance, whatever you talk about, it's always possible. So the time is wonderful. Excellent. It's Jan, it's it's amazing. And I, I'm I'm very happy that we had this fantastic timing of being able to speak to you just a few days after the, the launch of, of the new version of OSDU. 
where where the first fruits of this great cooperation became available. And as you just said, it's it's amazing what happened of how many different parties you brought together, how many different interests you joined and and how many silos you broke down. It's it's an amazing journey. I'm very happy to have you here today and to be able to uh, hear your story. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Johan. And again, thank, thank you, Patrick. I think this is exciting. SP is all behind this and we'll see more collaboration and more contributions in this. Thank you again. Thank you and all the best. See you again at SPE at DEETS. Bye bye.